Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to join the session. Uh, I'm Raphael Hoekstra from Unification Foundation. And we're going to talk today about on-chain randomness. So I call this talk fair play because it's what we say in the playground. We want everyone to play fairly. And I think that's very important when it comes to blockchain also. So we're talking about true on-chain randomness which has got amazing applications in gaming, NFTs, gambling, lotteries, these kind of applications. Uh, right in, on this first slide, I just included our, our logo for the randomness tool that we've designed. See, the, I wonder if there are some tech geeks here who might recognize what this is. If anyone recognizes the symbol in the center of the screen, please drop it in the chat. I'd love to see if anyone can recognize this. I'll keep talking, but I'll keep an eye on the chat if you pick up on that. So, let's skip to our first slide here. Well, essentially, there is a small problem with blockchains. It's that they are wonderful, wonderful tools, and specifically Ethereum blockchain can do so much stuff, but, there's one thing it can't do, and that is find true randomness. It sounds very strange when you're familiar with computers and you know that a random number generator, RNG, is so easy and so common with every kind of code that you write. So why is this not possible with Ethereum and blockchains in general? Uh, it's simply a deterministic problem. The Solidity blockchain uh, is designed so that it's deterministic and predictable, and it can only read what's within the chain itself. Can't pull anything else out from outside. So despite this being such a simple thing, it is one of the very few things that blockchains cannot do well. And hence we have a problem for randomness. And when you're building all kinds of cool applications on Ethereum, and using more and more value, money, this becomes more of a critical problem. I think in the early days of, say, Bitcoin, when Bitcoin had no value, or maybe one cent, it was a non-issue. But now, with billions flowing these blockchains, this is a very important consideration. So, at Unification Foundation, we're all about utility. We're bringing real ut utilitarian applications to the blockchain space for businesses, for enterprise, for software companies. And so we went and tackled this problem head on. We've designed a, a product, a brand new tool called Verified Open Randomness. And for short, we use the acronym VOR, V-O-R. So if you hear me say VOR, this mysterious word, I'm referring to verified open randomness. Now, this is the only slide with lots of text, so bear with me for just a moment here, because this is as succinct as you can make it. VOR allows developers open access to unpredictable, provable randomness for their smart contracts. And it's available via an API. That's where we say that it's immediately available. This is an important point. There's no need for a biz dev call. There's no need to email us or message us and say, please, can we use your verified open randomness? No. In the true spirit of openness, decentralization, it's wide open for anyone who wants to connect to the public API. And hence, we get that first point. The first feature of VOR is that it is permissionless. No forms, no phone calls. Design your application, connect to the contract, go for it. And secondly, second great feature of VOR is that it is trustless. Every request for randomness yields you this verification hash, which can you publicly verify. You can look at any block explorer and verify that this randomness call was indeed uh, fair, let's say. 
And I can explain briefly how that works. Essentially, anyone who designs a smart contract to link to the VOR contract will call a random number. And the VOR coordinator contract will return two things. One is the random number, and two is a verification hash, which can always be checked by anyone to verify that indeed that randomness request was authentic. So thirdly, VOR is scalable. You can send infinite requests for randomness. They process rapidly. Realistically, the speed is only limited or bottlenecked by the Ethereum network and its blocks, block time. And uh, with Ethereum undergoing fantastic upgrades in the near future, this is something we might see improving even more beyond the 11, 13 second block chimes that we're seeing at the moment. So finally, fourth feature is that VOR is efficient. Uh, calling a, a randomness request is a single transaction which bundles uh, two things into one. It's that request for randomness and there is a small fee paid in X fund, which, which is the, the currency or the, the cryptocurrency of unification, X fund. And we're keeping this at cost just to cover the Ethereum gas. So it, it's very small. And if you were to compare to any other uh, randomness services out there, you'll find that ours is very competitive. As I said, our intention is just to cover our gas. We're all about utility and openness and decentralization. So we, we welcome everyone to use this. Okay, good. We got through the tough stuff. Now time for the fun stuff. Away from the, the tech features and into the applications. So, you know, the applications are actually anything that you want to use randomness for on the blockchain. So far, we see three major use cases, which I'll outline here. But really, this is up to the imagination. Anything that you use randomness for in traditional computing, you could use this for, and perhaps even new use cases that haven't been thought of yet. So first use case are games. And that's a great thing, what this conference is about and, and why we decided to, to speak with CGC is that uh, traditional computer gaming use random number generators all the time. There's all kinds of RNGs going on for such simple things as turning left or right when there's a decision to be made in the game. Or, as the image shown here suggests, sometimes there's a loot box in a game and that could have a small prize, a big prize, or a massive prize inside it. And again, while in traditional computing games, this may be a magic sword, which is an in-game in prize. Nice, you want the magic sword. But now if we were talking Web3 and we're on the Ethereum blockchain, such a prize could be, it could be an ether or a whole bundle of tokens of that particular game. So there's all kinds of possibilities here for uh, bringing real randomness to blockchain games that are on Web3. I've written here, provably random virtual rewards or Easter eggs that can be used in Web3 games. And I think for game developers, this is gonna be a real uh, attractive feature to hook in users and create monetization which makes their games very sticky and they can gamify it by having micro prizes, little loot boxes, and occasionally those big exciting ones. The second use case that we have in mind are lotteries, gambling apps, on-chain casinos. So I, I've seen uh, games such as poker being put on the blockchain. And there are also lottery projects such as Pool Together. All these kind of projects work at a sort of fun novelty level uh, when there's just small money on the table. 
So you might try it for fun and put a few dollars in. But if you want to bring in heavy poker players, professional level, they're gambling tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands beyond. Or you're doing lotteries, which are public and open, and anyone can add, and these cumulative lotteries can get into the millions of dollars of value. You really want to trust this. And hence, hence the need for trustworthy on-chain randomness. And so, so we see a great use case for VOR for this. And I can say that we're, we're in discussions with a lottery project, which is very keen to integrate with VOR at the moment. So I, I look forward to sharing that when it's uh, announceable and we can officially announce the partnership with this lottery project. So there we go. Gambling in casino games, on-chain randomness is a key feature for providing uh, demonstrable fairness when there's real money on the table. Great. Third application here. We're thinking of NFTs. Flavor of the month, hottest thing at the moment, of course. There are all kinds of NFTs out there from simple JPEGs to complex album releases. And now we're seeing a whole new generation where it's like, it's like the community is, is content with it, what NFTs are in this simple format of simple images or animations. And now there's this appetite for extra features. And some of the features that we're seeing out there are generative NFTs, where the NFT is actually created in a bit of a spontaneous way. And it can be like, you don't know quite what you're going to get until you mint it. Big example of this was hash masks, massive NFT project in which uh, all of the hash masks were sold, but no one knew which one they were going to get. That was randomly assigned at the moment of minting. Also coming up with NFTs are dynamic NFTs, which change over time using oracles. And a very cool project I'm, I'm watching is Charged Particles. These are NFTs which you can use as a basket and put more NFTs inside it, such as ERC20 tokens, or in fact, other NFTs. So you could imagine this Russian doll. I believe the word is Matrushki, but I probably terribly pronounced it. Um, if you're listening, Mary, <laughs> forgive me. But you can have Russian doll NFTs where one is inside another, is inside another, is inside another. And hence, with generative NFTs, this feature of randomness can be very well utilized. For example, the hash mask one randomly assigning which NFT. That's just one example where it's assigning the NFT to the, the buyer or the Ethereum address, in fact. Another way this could be done is in the image we've used here, which is a project being, which is in development with, with VOR. An NFT that is being developed are the wizard cards. And these have different attributes among them, such as their color. And uh, I believe what they hold in their hand, their staff. And these are going to be assigned using the random number generation tool of VOR. So I look forward to seeing this project go live in the coming weeks. So that is a brief summary of the three cool use cases that we're seeing for verified open randomness at the moment. But of course, as a perfectly decentralized open API platform, the sky's the limit. It's up to all of our imaginations to find use cases for this, just as we've been doing for decades with computers. One other use case, which I'm keeping in the back of my mind here and thinking that could be great utility for, are giveaways. It's so popular in the blockchain space to have giveaways on Twitter, Telegram. These are giveaways of tokens or NFTs or even whitelisting certain Ethereum addresses for, uh, for token generation events. 
And sometimes we don't quite know how the developers have chosen the whitelist addresses or how they've selected the random winner. So if projects like this wanted to use more, then everyone would go, yeah, that was a truly random winner. And that's gonna be a good feeling as opposed to mm, maybe they just gave it to their buddy. We don't really know sometimes. And here's, so this is just a micro use for VOR for every one of those giveaways and whitelists that are being created. So I leave it there with the use cases and to close, I would just say that if there are any projects out there that would like to learn more or discuss how verified open randomness could integrate with their project and, and help them to demonstrate that their project is truly fair, then well, please get in touch. And you've really got two options here. If you're a savvy developer, you can go straight to our API and just do it. You don't need to ask permission. You'll find everything you need at vor.unification.io. Our website, you'll find a quick start guide. You'll find a test net. You'll find a link to our developer Discord. We'll provide support as you need. And if you're really savvy, you just go for it. Or if you'd like some help, discuss your use case or any technical support, please reach out. We're tech geeks and uh, we love discussing. So we'd love to talk about your application. I've included my email there if you'd like to reach out. I'll leave it there, short and sweet, but I'll, I'll take a look at the chat box now. So thank you for the welcome, Mary and Marco. I see a, a question here from Pavan asking, can an artist create and sell up another NFT relating to the same artwork on another NFT implementation on the same blockchain or another blockchain? Hmm. I will try to answer that. I'm not quite sure that I un understand, but I'll do my best, Pawan. Thank you. So essentially, currently VOR is live on the Ethereum blockchain and a testnet. And we're open to uh, integrating with other blockchains uh, when there is a need. So one project was asking about the Binance blockchain and we're considering that if they would decide to go ahead with four. Essentially, we started with Ethereum because it's the biggest and it's where all the action is happening. But if we get inquiries from the community for other blockchains, we'll look at them very carefully and we're open to doing that. I hope that kind of answered your question. So I'm gonna double check that I didn't miss something here. One moment, please. Yeah, looks to me like that was the one question from Pawan there. So if that's everything, I will leave it there and sign off. And again, do not hesitate to reach out to me personally or to connect to the unification team. We love to talk tech. Thank you so much to CGC, the organizers, and thank you for all tuning in. Oh, I'm seeing a message that I've missed. I'm sorry, I was looking at the chat, not the Q and A. My apologies. There are questions indeed. All right, sorry, Jorik, Jorik. I see that you're a techie and looks like perhaps you're German. Do the game developers who are releasing games soon also use VOR? such as Mirandus or the Sandbox. Mm, we spoke to the Sandbox a little bit. I'm not familiar with Mirandus, however. And so yes, I would say the answer is yes, Jörg. It's a great idea for the game developers who are still in development to talk to us before releasing. Because, well, two reasons. One is this, the VOR consideration may actually shape the development roadmap to make sure that they integrate the randomness API. 
And secondly, to be really honest, in this industry, partnerships are a good thing. So I would suggest that Unification is a really solid, reputable brand and proven blockchain company over many years in the space. And so it may be beneficial to your uh, development roadmap and uh, your launch to have announce a partnership with Unification, if indeed you're, you'd like to integrate the kit. Yeah. If you're personally developing a game there at York, we'd love to talk to you. And uh, for Zero, your question relating to gaming or gambling is that you're currently invested in a blockchain casino. We discussed their chain link uh, integration with VRF. And there's an issue regarding the block time. Yes, since in multiplayer scenario, people need to wait till block confirmation. Okay, yes, this is a serious challenge. Uh, so VRF by Chainlink is a very similar uh, randomness protocol. The major difference with us, I think you'll find is that we are permissionless. With VRF, I think you'll need to apply to their team for permission to use it. We're gonna open API. And I believe you'll find that our, our fee is more competitive. However, it's very similar in terms of block time because we're both running on the Ethereum blockchain. And to have on-chain randomness, this is a limitation. There are a couple of um, hacks that our CTO has discussed with a, a project that we're talking to right now. The short version of this is that we generate randomness on-chain, and then you can use this long random number to actually generate several calls of randomness if you need to. So from one call of randomness, you can actually get several. And so in that way, you might get multiple randomness numbers out of uh, one call to the blockchain and therefore be much faster. I hope that helps a bit. Jörg asks, today there was a lottery from my neighbor, Alice. Did they use VOR? Hmm. No, they did not, unless I'm unaware of it. So I'm, I've heard of my neighbor, Alice, but I'm not, I do not believe that they've used VOR. Thank you for um, asking though, because I, I want to look at their project and see how they're generating randomness in their lottery. It's a good one to follow. And it uh, looks like the final question here from Fudzero again. Second question, yes. Fast action, click-based games. Okay, since a lot of games have hit attack points that are probability-based, Will using VOR make sense to ensure accurate probabilities for every click? Especially mm, orbs. Or will one need a time independent VOR VRF solution? Cool. That's a technical question there for Zero. Okay. Now I'm not sure they understand specific of hit attack points. I imagine that's for certain games where you need to click. Uh, very close to your target. Mm, it's going to be a very game specific answer, in fact. So yes, you could totally use VOR for the randomness aspect, but when there's a probability involved, we'll need to add one more uh, line of code, let's say, to attenuate the, the response in terms of probability. Again, if you have a specific use case in mind, we're happy to talk about it and uh, we'll get Paul, our CTO, to address the specific question on probability. He's a master at um, finding the right solution for every use case. Cool. So I see we're very close on time and it looks like all the questions there. So thank you so much. I will sign off and thank you so much. All the best and thank you from Unification.